In this video, we're going to take a look at data resources in UI Builder. Uh, we're going to leverage an existing data resource uh, to grab some data from the database and show it on uh, our page here. Uh, so our use case is that uh, I've got a list of to-dos here, and this is nice, uh, but I want to call out what my next to-do is. Uh, so the next uh, to-do with a due date uh, I want to call out here. Uh, in this case, it's going to be this publish a blog to do, which uh, occurs before the other ones. And so I'm going to want this just to say publish a blog. And uh, we can do this without writing any code uh, pretty easily using data resources. Uh, so I'm going to click on the data icon here. And it's going to bring up my uh, data resource pane. Uh, so I'm going to start by going to add. And you'll notice that there's a lot of options here. Uh, I think most people are going to want to use this global uh, data resource. They're organized by application. Uh, so this is the application that the data resource lives in, not necessarily the application you're working in. And in this case, uh, definitely not the application I'm working in. Uh, so global is going to be the most common. Uh, it's got a server, uh, a server data category uh, where I can do a lot of different querying. Uh, it has operations where I can uh, create, uh, write, and delete to records, uh, transform, which we'll talk about in a subsequent video, and some client-side uh, data resources. Uh, but what I want, uh, I want to look up uh, some records and uh, grab the next one. Uh, with the next due date. So I'm going to hit look up records. Uh, the nice thing is it gives me a preview of the different uh, properties that this data resource has uh, that I can uh, that I can add uh, some input to and that will configure that data resource uh, similar to a component, uh, how a component has properties. So I'm going to hit add. And then in this middle pane, uh, this is where I'm going to configure the data resource. Uh, and then on the right is the preview. So this is a really nice feature. Uh, it's if I do this successfully, it'll tell me what data I'm getting back uh, before, you know, before I bind it to anything. Uh, so I can make sure this data resource works and then move on to my next step. So right now there's an error because I'm trying to query no table. Uh, so let's change this to my to do table. So simple to do. So right now it's going to grab everything from that table. It's going to give me uh, data about the row and the display value. So number is the display field on that table. So that's what it's giving me. Uh, I want to give it some conditions where I want the due date uh, to be in the future. So I'm going to say after yesterday, because that's how I roll. And then I want the, I want the user uh, to be me. So let's apply that. All right, so that looks right. Uh, I think all of these are already me and they're all in the future. Uh, and then return fields. I want to add a return field. So right now it's just returning number. I want the name because I'm going to want to show the name up here in the statics text. So now we can see that uh, I'm showing uh, the name. Uh, they're not in the right order yet, uh, right? Because I'm going to want uh, this first one publish a blog. And right now the first one is publish another blog. So let's order by the due date field. And we are going to want to order by ascending. Uh, and so let's see what that gives me. Uh, that does give me the right one. So publish a blog. Uh, so I think we have what we want here. I don't need, in fact, let's, uh, let's limit this to one because I only want the first result. Uh, and, uh, and I think we're ready to go ahead and use the data from this data resource. So I'm going to click into my static text component here. Uh, this is uh, what I want uh, to bind my data to. Uh, so instead of static text, I'm going to click on dynamic data bonding. Click into that. Uh, and then I have some different options here. I've got some page properties, but if you scroll down, the data resource properties are down here at the bottom. Uh, I can see that my data resource ID is this lookup records one. I can change that if I want to. I'm, I'm not going to here, uh, but here we have lookup records one results. So let's click on that. Uh, it's not going to really give me anything good yet uh, because right now we're, we're at the, uh, the top level. So if I hit dot, 
Uh, it's going to ask me, you know, do you want the first element in your array? Yep, that's what I want. Uh, let's hit dot again. Uh, so now we're into what kind of data do I want? I want the name and then I'm going to have to go one more step and I want the display value. So let's do that. And I think that is the right display value for publish a blog. So let's save it and then we'll test and then I think we'll be done. So drum roll. We got it. Uh, so my next to do publish a blog, publish a blog is here. And uh, we have now, you know, bound this component uh, to some data from the back end. Uh, you know, obviously this is a really simple use case for this. Uh, you could, you know, get a lot more complex with it uh, and different components may expect different things uh, to where, um, you know, I could have, uh, you know, maybe I have a component that's expecting, you know, some sort of array of objects and I could pass that to the component instead of a single, you know, element uh, in that object.